Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We're looking at a second conversation now. Uh, LCCI have actually advised the federal government to remove subsidy. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry has advised the federal government to remove subsidies and implement the Petroleum Industry Act religiously. The advice was given by the Vice President, LCCI, Gabriel Idahosa, at the 60th anniversary celebration of oil producers and trade section held in Lagos recently. According to him, fuel subsidy should be removed because it's no longer sustainable, noting that its removal was fundamental to the growth of downstream sector. The chamber also said its critical position occupied by the oil and gas sector has consistently advocated for the creation of conducive business environment where operators can thrive. The menace of oil theft, pipeline vandalism, low investment and insecurity have all contributed to the wars recorded. This as the oil imp important sector is experiencing. We expect the government to do more in fixing these issues knowing the proportion of revenue contributed by this sector. We have always recommended that the government must strive to implement the Petroleum Industry Act 2021, remove the unsustainable fuel subsidy, deregulate the downstream sector, remove peculiar issues affecting operators in the sector. We look forward to a feature where the NNPC Limited and other oil and gas asset are commercialized run more effectively, and Nigerian attracts all investment required to boost oil production, refining capacity. This is what he said. According to him, all PTS member companies accounted for about 90% of Nigerian oil production and contributed significantly to domestic and export gas production and supply. Over the last decade, all PTS member companies accounted for 40 to 60 percent of government revenue, 85 and 90 percent of exporting earnings. All PTS member companies are also proud to have paid thousands, uh, tens of billions of dollars in taxes, levies, royalties, rents, and license fees to the Nigerian government. And this is done through uh, indirect employment of people, local contractors and service providers. Uh, the, the conversation is almost endless right here. But we have uh, a guest joining us, Adamson Momor, who is uh, the PRO of New Peng. Thank you for joining us. Hello? Yes, Adamson, thank you for joining us this morning. Yeah, good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, so let's get to it. I mean, uh, one of the issues that uh, the LCCI is asking is that there be an implementation, implementation of the PIA. And uh, prior to this, you have the governors complaining about uh, the shortfall for revenue. It hasn't been a plus for them. And some people say implementing the PIA would not be of uh, any good to the economy, especially where there will be revenue shortfall. I'd like to share your thoughts on this, the LCCI and the issue of implementation of the PIA. Uh, I, I'm not hearing you well. Okay. Can you hear me now? Go ahead, go ahead. So the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry is advising that the government implements, as part of their concern, the PIA. And now having the PIA, you have another set of persons. Uh, it feels like, you know, gov go governors have actually complained of the implementation of the PIA will, would actually hurt the economy. So I'm saying, what are your thoughts on this? juxtaposing the concerns of the LCCI and, you know, uh, the governors in an implementation the, of the PIA. What are your thoughts? The, uh, the, the PIA is something we have all prayed for. And thank God uh, we, it has been passed into law after so many years that it has been the cooler. That made me the implementation will be in phases. And it will guarantee transparency in the oil and gas industry because uh, most of the businesses in the oil and gas industry are, have been shrouded in uh, secrecy. So, and uh, a lot of fraud 
So the TIA is a welcome development, and it will go a long way to bring in uh, new investors who have been having doubts about uh, the operations in the oil and gas industry. But, um, so I, let's get to this other part of the conversation where uh, you have other parts that are saying that if uh, the, the PIA becomes operational, uh, it will significantly reduce government revenue and in fact result in court and maintenance by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. It's not as like so. The, the, the NMPC is now a limited liability company. Its uh, operations have been commercialized, and uh, there will be less uh, government uh, interference. So I, I don't think uh, it's going to be like that. But, but, but when you say it's going to be like that now, the issue, the actual issue is you have the fact that there are remittances. And if you're going to take that, we understand the implication for government it revenue. You know that the, the, the... I mean, at the end of the day, there's... Shareholder, we need determine the dividends and uh, not pay royalties to government, which is, uh, which is good. All right, so, so what's the way forward? Because this is a situation that, um, you know, Nigerians and the government will have to, to deal with uh, uh, going forward. We can't continue like this. We know what the economy is going through right now. We know what um, the uh, international markets are facing right now. We know about the cash crunch that government is facing right now. It's a, 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 a trillion naira deficit budget that the government is running. So what do you think the way forward is? Well, what we are facing now is as a result of uh, leadership failure. Because uh, I don't see why we are going to be borrowing, borrowing, uh, you, you know, even the federal government is even borrowing to pay salaries now, which is very, very bad, you know. This is bad uh, economics. So I believe the, the way out is to have the political will to take the bull by the horn, sanitize the industry, the oil and gas industry. There are a lot of, uh, even, even now, the, 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 the state is still not uh, very clear. Sanitize the industry, uh, let the refineries come on screen so that we will stop uh, this massive importation of uh, refined products. We cannot have crude oil and be sending it for refining when we have the refineries here that are more important. Thank God that the Portacot refinery will soon go on stream by early next year by producing 60,000 barrels uh, uh, refined uh, crude per day. That will go a long way to put, uh, to reduce the pressure on uh, the foreign exchange and uh, bring in uh, the needed uh, resources. So all we need is just the political will and the right leadership to pilot the affairs of this country. So what happens to reduction in revenue available for service delivery by the government, the federal government? Well, that, that is, that, that's see what I'm saying. We, we, the, we lack the political will to really do the needful. What is the, what, 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 what's coming out from customs? What's coming out from federal federal revenue service? What about the, 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 the state of uh, crude? This should be all just, all, all this should be galvanized and uh, improve our revenue uh, base instead of uh, this massive borrowing, borrowing. That at the end of the day, our great grandchildren will have to suffer for. But, but uh, this argument is valid because we're talking about a sector that is responsible, is a major sector, uh, you know, responsible for uh, foreign earnings or earnings of the economy. And so, uh, how can these things be, really? In uh, in respect to subsidy, we cannot. Uh, uh, completely uh, remove subsidy now because uh, we don't, we are not uh, 
uh, producing refined uh, products. If we remove subsidy now, totally, the masses will suffer. The, the price of petroleum products will, will, will definitely shoot up. So it has to be a gradual thing. Since the refinery, and uh, as you said, by next year, may remove the subsidy. But for now, it will be it will, it will, it will turn hard on uh, the city. Well, we have to let you go now. Uh, Adamson Momor, thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mercy. It's, uh, it's sort of a catch-22 situation where, you know, Kamel is, is in a tight corner. <laughs> 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 you know, so I don't know what we were going to do about it. But, but anyway, this is what the LCCI is saying. Hopefully, maybe in the future, we'll have someone from the LCCI uh, be with us in the studio to talk about this. Um, tell us more what they are saying. But that's the size of our package this morning. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with more uh, conversations. The campaigns are upon us. You know, I remember reading the cartoon, uh, the um, uh, the cartoon, the comic book, um, or yeah, the comic book, um, Asterix and Obelix. You know, back in it as a youngster, as a kid, and they were always afraid this guy was about to fall on their heads. <laughs> you know, so the campaigns are upon us, and hopefully, God will take us through this season peacefully and will come out uh, shiny at the end. My name is Kofi Bartels. Please remember that you can always follow us on social media at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram on YouTube. You can find us at Plus TV Africa and at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle where our programs are live streamed every single day. Well, that's it. We will join the newsroom for the news brief at 9 o'clock. Please stay with us. I am Messi Bopo.